everybody so this video is about partial model validation so basically the idea behind partial model validation is that uh, you know you can take a full model which has spots, flows, a bunch of variables put one more stock here and um, oh sorry, we cannot have one socket. So let's say you know the two are connected. Uh, but for some reason, and you know, I'll mention a few reasons later. Uh, you know, you want to validate just one section of this model. Let's say just this. So basically, this is the the idea behind partial model validation. So, you know, as the name says, you know, you're just validating a portion of your model. Now, why would you like to do that? Well, there are many different reasons. You know, one reason has to do with, uh, you know, model validation, meaning uh, you validate one sector of the model. If you have data on that sector, uh, to know exactly how that sector behaves. So the classical example is the example from, uh, you know, uh, classical paper from Jack Homer, uh, where he had a gigantic model uh, evaluating how uh, cardiac pacemakers were being adopted over time. Uh, but then, you know, within one section of his model, he basically had some very interesting, actually fascinating findings. Uh, to show that publications about uh, pacemakers were oscillating. Okay, so basically what he did was he had some information, he collected some information on citation, uh, not citation, publication patterns over time for these pacemakers, and this was a sector of his model. And then you know he wanted to validate just that sector to see whether that sector behaved in accordance uh, to what he found from the literature. Okay, so basically this is the rationale. Now let's take a look at uh, how actually you can uh, do this. What I'm going to do here is to use a model uh, from the Vincent library. Uh, we've actually used this in, a, in another video, uh, but this is the so-called East model. I'm just going to open this up. Now, you can read more about this model later, uh, but I'm just going to give you a very, very quick overview. Basically, the idea is that you have, you know, yeasts in, um, uh, you know, in a lab, uh, and then, you know, they have a certain rate of division, and they die at a certain rate. Now, in the simplified model, and this is the yeast one model, uh, what you do is that once you run the model, I just ran it, uh, and then you plot the yeast count, you will get, there's a, a, a blue line here, but you will get an exponential growth without any uh, termination. Okay, so it grows exponentially. Now, if you look at this model, uh, you know, the reason why yeasts are growing non-stop is because there's no connection uh, with, uh, you know, water or sugar. Actually, I just recalled, uh, we, we did not have a video for this. This was a topic for one of our workshops. Anyhow, so, no, but this is the simplest model. Now, if you want to do something that's, uh, you know, more um, complicated, uh, then what you can do is to take the East model, I'll, I'll take a more, you know, the, the most complex model that's provided for East in Vincent. And this is the East 4. Now, in East 4, the model is substantially expanded in that it takes sugar, you know, water into account. So, you know, as the East is, uh, 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 is grown, uh, you know, sugar is being consumed. It also needs water. And if you run this entire model, which I'm doing right now, and then you plot this growth, you have something that looks like this. Now, we won't go over the details of the model, but initially it has an exponential growth, 
and then it hits like the you know limit in terms of water and the sugar that's available for growth, uh, and then it starts declining until you know the number of these you know bridge close to zero or zero. Now the question then becomes: Let's say that you know at one point you have this specific model, the complete model, which you would like to uh, you know make a partial model validation of to see whether after you have implemented everything, if the unbounded model, in other words, whether the, the first model, which had east uh, only without the uh, limits or the boundaries uh, imposed by sugar and water, whether it's still working. Okay, so again, this is a simplified thing. Uh, basically, what you could do in this scenario is to uh, you know, create a partial model validation, which you can do very simply by doing this. You select uh, each one of the variables that you want to include in the model, and you do that by selecting them and then holding the Shift key. So I'm holding Shift right now, and I'm selecting division rate, termination rate, average lifetime, which is a variable that goes into termination and was in that uh, uh, original uh, model. Uh, and then also the division rate. Now I only want this, okay? I don't want anything else. Then what you do is that you go to model, you see partial model. Just getting out of my, I'm just going to push this to the side here. So model, partial model, and then I see I select the option uh, selected variable. Now I'm not going to go over this now, but incomplete model is when you delete certain variables. Invisible variables is uh, basically when you have multiple views, so you have multiple uh, layers in the model. But for now, let's just do selected variables. Okay. I'm going to call this uh, version run. I'm going to call this partial model. Back to the, oh, I can't bring it back. Well, anyway, so I'm going to call this partial model, and I am going to now simulate. A little error. I can just put this back in here. And now I'm going to plot these counts again. And what I find in my uh, uh, um, east count is that, uh, you know, I have a, a, uh, a curve that goes back to what I, what I had in the, the first model. So bottom line message here is even though I have a full model at this point, I can still select the variables uh, you know, for my simple model and run a partial model simulation. Now, you might ask, okay, Ricardo, so, you know, what exactly happens to the other variables? You know, what about everything else? Well, all of those variables uh, in a partial model simulation, they're held at their initial value. So whatever you have set as the initial value, uh, you know, this is where they are going to, to be. So, you know, if you had sugar at a certain amount, you know, they will stick uh, uh, at that value, uh, you know, for the time of the model. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, you know, I think later we're probably going to be coming back to this subject uh, with some other things. Bye.